Let me tell you guys who Margaret Sanger was. Margaret Sanger was an advocate, right, for racist eugenics, specifically designed to reduce the number of black people, among others, and she is the illustrious founder of Planned Parenthood. And she publicly stated that morons, quote, morons, mental defectives, epileptics, illiterates, paupers, unemployables, criminals, prostitutes, and dope fiends should be surgically sterilized or sent to segregated work camps. She advocated for parents to stop having children if any of their babies had cognitive deficiencies or physical abnormalities. In 1925, Sanger wrote about people she saw as unfit, saying, quote, their lives are hopeless repetitions. All that they have said has been said before. All that they have done has been done better before. Such human weeds clog up the path, drain up the energies and the resources of this little earth. We must clear the way for a better world. We must cultivate our garden. through a little history, a little walk down memory lane, if you will. But I want to start out by reading you guys a very old letter. And this letter was penned on December 10th, 1939 by the, not the great, Margaret Sanger to a Dr. C.J. Gamble. And once I read this letter, Everything else from that is going to make a whole lot of sense. Now, you may have heard of this letter before, but if not, if this is your first time, sit back because this one is a doozy. Let me tell you guys who Margaret Sanger was. Margaret Sanger was an advocate, right, for racist eugenics, specifically designed to reduce the number of black people, among others, and she is the illustrious founder of Planned Parenthood. And she publicly stated that morons, quote, morons, mental defectives, epileptics, illiterates, paupers, unemployables, criminals, prostitutes, and dope fiends should be surgically sterilized or sent to segregated work camps. She advocated for parents to stop having children if any of their babies had cognitive deficiencies or physical abnormalities. In 1925, Sanger wrote about people she saw as unfit, saying, quote, their lives are hopeless repetitions. All that they have said has been said before. All that they have done has been done better before. Such human weeds clog up the path, drain up the energies and the resources of this little earth. We must clear the way for a better world. We must cultivate our garden, end quote. So I have just given you just a little bit of idea of who Margaret Sanger is. She sounds like a delightful woman, didn't she? I, I, I mean, listen, when someone says that their lives are hopeless repetitions, and all that they've said has been said before and all that. I mean, this woman had a God complex. This woman really believed that she was God and that she was the sole arbiter of who should live and who should die. That is a very wicked and dangerous worldview, but that is just a little glimpse as to who Margaret Sanger is. So now what I want to do, I'm going to read the letter that she wrote to Dr. C.J. Gamble. So Listen to it. Here it goes. It's good to know that you are recovering. It's dear Dr. Gamble. It's good to know that you are recovering. I am also stepping up and have felt much better the past week. Miss Delp was here for Thanksgiving and I am more than delighted to learn that she was able to get $250 from the California Birth Control Organization plus the $600 from the Federation. That's good. She is a go-getter and a live wire, very tactful and charming as well. I think that my pick of her has been justified even though she is a little higher priced than the ordinary. She has been working on the article to be written by Miriam DeFord, Mrs. Maynard Shipley. 
They were good enough to send me a rough draft for comments and suggestions. And the important suggestion that I made was not to include Miss Delp's actual name in the article because of the fact that her sister is married to one of the high spots in the farm security department. And if the enemy started to work on her, they might make it difficult along the line. Otherwise, I think the article is good. As to my sending suggestions to the Federation, I think it is really unfair for me to do so. I am far too away to have the personal contact of the different reactions, and it only holds up any definite project to have the pros and cons battered about which makes for more chaos and confusion. There is only one thing that I would like to be in touch with, and that is the Negro Project of the South, which, if the execution of the details remain in Miss Rose's hands, my suggestion will not be confusing because she knows the way my mind works. Ms. Rose sent me a copy of your letter on December 5th, and I note that you doubt it worthwhile to employ a full-time Negro physician. It seems to me from my experience, where I have been in North Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas, that while the colored Negroes have great respect for white doctors, they can get closer to their own members and more or less lay their cards on the table, which means their ignorance, superstitions, and doubts. They do not do this with the white people, and if we can train the Negro doctor at the clinic, he can go among them with enthusiasm and with knowledge, which I believe will have far-reaching results among the colored people. His work, in my opinion, should be entirely with the Negro profession and the nurses, hospitals, social workers, as well as the county's white doctors. His success will depend upon his personality and his training by us. The minister's work is also important and also he should be trained perhaps by the Federation as to our ideals and the goals that we hope to reach. We do not want word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population and the minister the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their more rebellious members. I agree with you that Miss Rose has done a remarkable job in thinking through and planning the project, but she has worked on it for some time. As soon as I knew there was the possibility of getting any money, I put her to work drafting the plan for Mr. Lackner. She is excellent at just such a job. She hangs on to details, weaves and correlates them into the design. I shall never cease to have the utmost admiration and regard for her ability. And so far, I have not seen anyone in the Federation who could take her place. I am constantly delighted at the thought that you are getting better and now we must pray this woman is a piece of work, ain't she? We must pray for Mrs. Timmy, who is seriously ill at the doctor's hospital in New York. My regards to your Sarah and to yourself. Sincerely yours, Ms. Margaret Sanger. I am so grateful for you guys for bearing with me as I... You know, I did the theatrics. I was trying to channel my inner, you know, sophisticated Upper West Side, New York. And um, I don't know. I don't know if I did it justice or not. But this letter is pretty powerful. And this letter is powerful and it's a part of history. And it actually reflects the thoughts and the opinions, the idea and the worldview that undergirds the entire structure as we know it as the abortion industry, the womb assassination that we are witnessing happening in our country. Now that I've read you that letter written by Ms. Margaret Sanger. So Ms. Margaret Sanger, she, you know, she starts the letter out with some pleasantries, right? And I didn't want it for context. I, I was trying to give you uh, some insight into her personality, right? She's so eloquent and, you know, just full of vigor and, 
uh, sophistication, which is a far cry from the hopeless repetitions, the, the weeds, the undesirables that she sought to exterminate from the earth through her godlike complex. Now, not only did she talk about the Negro physician, okay? She highlighted the Negro minister. See, that's my wheelhouse, right? The, the Negro minister, you know, I call them the pulpit pimps, the bishops of brimstone, them popes of perdition. Mm -hmm. And when I refer to the Negro minister that way, I'm not talking about my biblically sound pastors that are holding fast to the faithful word as taught and, re and those that are refuting those who contradict it. I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all know I love you. You know, I encourage you privately and I'm so grateful for your love and support of the work that I'm doing here. But these other ones, these, these false apostles, these false shepherds who were easily beguiled and willing for a fee. Don't forget the fee part because everybody got a price. The fee part, the Negro minister, she says should be trained perhaps by the Federation. She's talking about the Federation, the birth control league as to our ideals and the goal that we hope to reach. Well, what was the goal that Margaret hoped to reach. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but obviously it was the extermination of people, right? Now, now to be fair, yes, Margaret didn't like black folks. Like she was really trying to get rid of black folks, but it wasn't just black. Like if you was white and feeble, you had to go to, you just not that smart, right? You're just poor and just, you know, wretched. You are, you're weed clogging up the path in her garden. And so therefore you had to go, but she did make a consorted effort to target specifically these undesirable aspects of her, of her eugenics idea, this utopia that she wanted to create that did not include all of God's creation, but rather the ones that she deemed fit of his creation. And so she wanted to utilize the influence, the spiritual influence that the Negro preacher had in the lives of his people. It's a very trusted position, might I add. I would even say it's the same today. I mean, it's a spiritual, it's a, it's, it's a spiritual position that someone who claims to be called by God has a level of spiritual influence and authority in the lives of the believer. But I would also argue that because of the priesthood of the believer, we should never view our elders or our pastors as like these super saints and we down here. No, no, no. In God's eyes, we're all one in Christ Jesus. However, if he has accepted the charge of, of spiritual discipleship and guidance in a shepherding capacity, he is a steward. And as a steward, his job is to make sure that he is found faithful so that he receives the unfading crown of glory at the last time. But it is obvious here through nefarious means, right? Through, through, through the eyes of, 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 of deception and wickedness that some of these Negro preachers who I would argue were never one of us to begin with, us meaning the body of believers. They were easily, easily beguiled and were fully on board with disseminating an anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-gospel, anti-human flourishing message on behalf of this woman. All for a fee. Yes, there was money involved. You don't think, you, you thought they did it for free? No. And don't think, do not think that MLK received the Margaret Sanger Award. It was posthumously, -human, meaning after he died, he got the award. But what I'm saying is that he was very well, much aware of Margaret's agenda, right? Mar 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 Margaret was communistic and, 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 well, she had a lot of issues, but the fact that she wanted to employ the Negro preacher as a part of her Negro project, that says a lot. She wanted the Negro preacher to straighten out the idea, you know, cause you know, you got those rebellious ones, you know, the ones like me to ask questions like, well, wait a minute, pastor, what you, what you mean that I, I, it's, 
it's a good thing not to have too many kids. And and, and if I do, the thought of murdering it is, is good and righteous? Is that what you're trying to sell to me? Those are some of the ideas that the Negro preacher was trying to push on people. Not just that, but we forget the sterilization. You know, you got a woman in your church and she done popped out seven kids. The Negro preacher might be the one to put the idea in her mind. Well, you know, you might need one to wrap this up. It's, this is a lot of kids. You, you know, you and Jethro over there, y'all done, y'all done cranked up by seven babies now. Why don't you go down there to uh, that new health clinic? You know, the one up in Harlem? Mm-hmm. They take good care of you. Got Negro doctors and nurses, too. Sterilization. Putting in the, the minds of women who would never think about limiting their birth potential. Now, all of a sudden, it becomes, it becomes a thing. That seed, that root of, of wickedness was sown. And through the fullness of time, it grew and it germinated. 